Claire Kramer. Hello, I'm Nicholas Brendan. And you're watching Real School. And you're watching Real School. Grr. Arg. I've called him one of this generation's greatest creative minds. He's the genius that created Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel, Firefly, and Dollhouse. He's also directed a couple films, Serenity, and this tiny little film that's coming out at the end of the week, you may have heard of it, The Avengers. He is Joseph Hill Whedon. Now, if you're a stranger to Joss, let me tell you a little bit of what you can expect. Amazing character development, witty scripts, and especially when you think you know what's coming, yeah, you really don't. One other little thing you may notice about Whedon, well, he likes to work with the same actors again and again. More importantly, these actors love to work with him more than once. So what is it about the Whedonverse that makes it such a tight-knit family? Well, don't ask me about working with Joss. Let's ask the actors directly when I got a chance to meet them. He knows what performance he wants uh, and how to marry it with the technical aspect of, of shooting. And uh, what he says goes, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, you can ask for things and do things, but he's pretty set in what he, he would like to see. And I like that. I mean, I, I think um, he's got a clear understanding of every character in every moment. Joss is such a taskmaster that is very specific about tears. So, and I can cry on cue, like I can just I can cry not that hard, like for me. I know every actor's got their Achilles heel. Luckily crying is not one of them for me. But he, he's just very specific about where the tears should be, how many tears, <laughs> and, and out with I. I was just so tired and had to go to the bathroom so bad. I was worried that I was costing them money because once you go into your lunch time, they cost the studio a lot of money. Like the union is very specific about breaking when you're supposed to break, and we weren't. So I just kept seeing dollar signs because I couldn't get that fucking tear. <laughs> it took a while for me to realize uh, what it was like to work for Joss, and I, I think what he did for me that uh, was a miracle is that he took somebody who didn't have anything and didn't have anybody to stand up for me and he said I believe in you and he took me from nothing and put me in this position to succeed. He made me feel safe. I did a lot of crazy things when I first started out because I just didn't know any different and he always just was like that dad who thinks their kid is a is an artist you know and he just he he, uh, he nurtured with Joss directing The Avengers and with him creating so many amazing hit television shows, it's difficult to remember that this guy started out as a writer. He's written Academy Award nominated scripts for film and even comic books. A third generation writer behind his father and his grandfather, the family affair doesn't end there, with younger brothers Zack and Jed also being writers and having collaborated on other projects with Joss himself. But Joss has had his share of ups and downs. So what did he learn? How did he become the writer that he is? We always talk about Joss, the genius that is Joss, but I think part of the genius is he also holds the right people. Um, and since he's worked on so many of his productions and been involved like that, I was wondering if you could comment on some of the writers that have worked through these shows. Yeah, I mean, I definitely give it up to Joss. He it's hard in the studio world and even, you know, in television to get people behind you to take chances on actors that aren't very well known. And he has done that. I mean, he has done that. There are just countless people that he's, that he's um, shepherded into awesome roles and awesome careers. Um, and then, of course, the writers as well. I mean, he's just really... A, the kind of guy that gives people gives people the chance if they're up for the work and if they're up for if he sees something in them and it's really special because you don't get that a lot and he's you know I've worked with writers that started with him you know early on there were people that said they were PAs or they were writers assistants but if they turned in a good product he put it up there you know um, and so it's just a, another testament to what a good guy he is. He's just not your superficial Hollywood type. We're cutting that. And he's like, ah, oh, okay. And then you call the next day. Uh, remember that scene that you guys have talking? That's cut. And I'm like, I, I got so paranoid. 
<laughs> and um, I just have to trust him. And he said that he wrote too much talking, and that the movie just was losing its pace, and it's an action movie, and there was just not enough time for romance. So he's like, I'll make it up to you in the next movie, I promise. It was one of my favorite auditions I've ever had. And when I left, I called Joss right away. You know, he's, he's like my mentor, so I, I called him and I said, it's the craziest experience with the uh, uh, X-Men. And I, I described the scene to him and he said, yeah, I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> the audition scene. And Joss writes in a way that... that immediately connects things to it. Sometimes you have to work really hard to to get connected with feel emotional and with the way that Joss writes, it just comes out. So what's next for the world of Whedon? Well, after the Avengers and the amazing year that Joss is having with Cabin in the Woods and perhaps even Much Ado About Nothing, this year is going to be bigger than ever for him. He's going to be more mainstream than ever before. First, let's hear a little bit about how the stars have dealt with the expanding and ever popular Whedonverse. Then, we'll find out about some of the future Whedon projects, including, get this, a Buffy reboot that doesn't include Joss. Yeah. It's international, that's what blows my mind. I mean, people, that show has translated into, I mean, I've been in South America, Africa, China. I've heard my voice dubbed in more wacky voices <laughs> than Richard. Um, and it's just, it's astonishing, but it's its so, it's so exciting to me, you know, because it, it, it just shows how universal and powerful the show and that character was. I don't, I don't know that I've ever really knew that so much until more after the fact, and then I had been invited to a couple of these things, and I went to do one in Blackpool, England, and 4,000 people showed up and were asking questions. Oh, wow. This is <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I was so aware of it, really. I don't know how you could disassociate that, how you could, you can't. They, they're synonymous, so I don't, let me know. Good luck. <laughs> it's been a couple of years since Dr. Horrible, and I know that they, you know, Joss even had a title at a certain point, and they were really into uh, filming it, but then Dollhouse got picked up for a second season, and um, and then, you know, I, I know that after Dollhouse ended, their first priority was to get um, Dr. Horrible 2 going, um, and Marissa and Jed, as you know, probably right on Spartacus, and Jed um, and Zach, the other vegan who wrote, wrote Dr. Horrible, uh, was on Fringe, and then he's on Rubicon now, so they're all all professional, you know, working actors, and you know, working on a TV show, it's like a 14 hour day every day. So, and then, you know, I know Josh was uh, looking toward it, and then he kind of got the biggest movie that in existence, which is going to be the best superhero movie ever, for sure, and directed. So, I, I have a feeling he's going to be busy for a while. Well, you would think that, Felicia, but in fact, Josh decided to follow up the most ambitious comic book film ever made with. A Shakespearean adaptation. Yeah, he shot another movie right after the Avengers. Hey, when you're on a roll, you're on a roll. I was recently able to talk with Whedon veteran Sean Mayer and Amy Acker and ask them a little bit about how one of this generation's best writers takes on one of history's best writers. We're here with Sean Mayer. And Sean, I just have one quick question because I'm a huge Shakespeare fan. Uh -huh. What can we expect? Like a different take for this uh, role? We can absolutely expect a different take. Because uh, he's, you know, he's the villain. He's yes. the deliciously uh, wonderful villain. What I loved about him, um, which, um, you know, I've actually never played sort of the bad guy, um, which Joss was baffled by because he thought I was a oh, great bad guy. Um, but he was so uh, calculating about all of his manipulation, and he did it in such a, an earnest way, like so straightforwardly, like to your face, like I'm earnestly nice guy who's going to f you over, you know. But I think you know my approach to him. I think I had never done Shakespeare before, so I, I worked uh, specifically with um, like a voice uh, 
voice coach um, to, to just get the Shakespeare down and make sure it's a, you know, comfortable enough because it was such a quick, 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 quick shooting schedule that there really was no room for error on our part or his part. I mean, he was like, I'm going to do this many setups, I know exactly what I want, we're going to do it fast, you guys cannot fuck it up. Like, you know, like, um, so in that sense, it was like live theater, which was exhilarating and magical and then, you know, we would, we would uh, finish the scene and it was just like, we all had goose, it was just like, we were so high from it, it was sort of, you know, reminiscent of live theater. Do you think your time on Firefly and Serenity helped you kind of prepare for the language since you guys use such great you know, language yeah. in those scripts? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think also his language is so uh, brilliant. Um, uh, we are Firefly, and, and so he has to sort of find the, the rhythms within Shakespeare, you know. Uh, much to do is not in iambic pentameter, so um, it's, it's the easiest, I think, to translate to a contemporary world. Um, it's the most timeless. Um, but, honestly, I'm really excited. And you know what? Amy, you can get a little bit of Amy. Amy's like, I was like, astounded at how she's like, so good. That's great. Yeah. Thanks very much for your time. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you. John had nothing but nice things to say about your performance. What you do? Oh, well, I hear he kind of steals the show. Oh, does he? Yeah. We were asking him about his role, but, you know, his approach to it, so it was kind of interesting. Have you done Shakespeare before? So Real Schoolers, that's it. I had a ton of fun meeting these people, and I hope you had a ton of fun watching. So for now, school's out? Eh, not this time. How about, in Joss We Trust?